Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata and Hadoop World in New York City. I'm here with Annika Jimenez. Annika, how you doing? Good. Good, Good to be here. So you're with Pivotal, right? Yes. And Pivotal's been around now about eight months as a spin out from in April. EMC. And, yep. yeah. So can you talk a little bit about how your journey has been since you guys became Pivotal? Sure, yeah. I mean, I actually joined um, Greenplum in 2011. Um, so I come from the, the Greenplum heritage of of Pivotal, and um, in essence, we've been spending the past eight months reconciling a lot of disparate technologies coming together towards the vision that drove the creation of, of Pivotal to begin with, which was really bringing together cloud technologies, data technologies, and app technologies. Right, so if you kind of stand back and look at the state of the industry, the big data industry, we're the ones that are out there saying it's not enough to just do data, look at data, build the platforms to consume and process through data, et cetera. You actually have to do something with the insights that come out of that. And when companies want to do something, that usually means they want to enable actioning. And then you're starting to talk about the, the semantic vocabulary of applications. Right? So those technologies are coming in from the VMware side of EMC. Yep. Um, there are things like Spring, Gemfire, RabbitMQ, um, a whole slew of things that are all about application enablement. Uh, so what we're really working on and what we've been working on over the past eight months is really connecting the data capabilities with the application technologies. So some of the announcements that we made earlier were taking Gemfire, our complex event processing engine, in memory engine, and um, integrating it with Hadoop, for example. Um, we also have Spring, which is kind of a, an application development um, framework, also now integrated with Hadoop, right? So you'll see we're, you know, putting our, we're building off of a Hadoop kernel, um, and it's not just uh, data and analytics, it's building insights through data science and connecting those with apps that can actually action on those insights. So is this kind of like a uh, data middleware play? I, I mean, mean, it increasingly, you know, can become kind of, uh, it, it's, at the end of the day, it's a, it is a true platform, right? right. right? Um, and that platform ultimately will be able to be cloud provisioned or on-prem, whatever it needs to be. Um, but it, I don't, I, I, to call it middleware, I think, is to label it kind of as too inconsequential to what it's really trying to do. Okay. It's really going right. to be re-engineering kind of corporate platforms around data ingest to um, data discovery and insights and then application enablement and delivery, right? So that's, that's a whole slew of capabilities that we're trying to make much more seamless for the enterprise sector. Okay, so enterprise sector, that's, when I think of middleware, I think of enterprise, like yeah. it's the commodity in enterprises. Yeah, so you've, been writ you've written a little bit about um, predictive enterprises. Yep. And how does that work with the whole Pivotal platform? So, you know, in essence, what I'm trying to say, I'm the global head of data science services, right? So uh, I'm, I might have a biased view on um, That's good. how far along data science should be taken for the organization. But from my perspective, I, there's a lot of kind of almost lip service being played to data capabilities and becoming data driven. And I think that it's really important to very much understand that it's not just about putting your data in Hadoop. Um, it's actually about what you do after you've put the data in Hadoop, right. right? And very frequently, a lot of companies are not really well set up yet to elevate the task of analytics and data science to move from looking back at what has happened to really leverage the data that they're curating to really predict what will happen in the future. And if they do move, elevate their data science capabilities to become more predictive, and they build the connectors off of data science to application integration, then suddenly you're actioning on data in a much more aggressive and potentially um, kind of impactful yeah, company changing way, right? Um, and so, it's not um, said lightly, right? So this challenge for companies to become a predictive enterprise is all about asking them to look internally and say, are you organizationally ready to be a, a predictive enterprise? Are you figuring out where your 
data miners are, your statisticians, and are you elevating them so they have much more visibility into their work, and are you connecting them to your IT data platform owners, and are you making their work impactful, right? And if that's not happening, if there's this feeling of residual angst over the concerns about the value coming off of analytics efforts, then something needs to be done about it. And it's usually not just a technology's play. There's a whole lot more that goes with it. Absolutely. So are there industries that are more uh, suited for doing predictive uh, analysis and, and figuring to become a predictive enterprise? So what we're seeing, so I have a global team of about 30 data scientists. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we exist in many different corners of the world and we're working with companies across any sector that you can think of. And the exciting thing for us is we're seeing the potential for data disruption in just about yeah. any sector. You know, transportation, um, hardcore manufacturing, logistics, you know, these very old school um, kind of sectors are stand to benefit significantly from um, a true harnessing of their data in a very meaningful way. Um, What's, that means that I think a lot of the you know, more old school sectors actually are, are almost in a position to leapfrog into kind of the pivotal vision, right? Uh, what they're trying to do is, um, especially the companies that are associated with the Internet of Things, you, know, you have yeah. these very traditional manufacturing companies that create widgets or machinery and now they suddenly can instrument these machines and you can get data capture off of the physical object in a very interesting and exciting way that suddenly lends itself to discovery in the same way that we were doing when I was at Yahoo instrumenting web pages. Right? So that stands to immediately enable them to leapfrog into predictive capabilities and they all get it. Yeah. Right? And so I wouldn't say that any one sector is in a better position, it's just that the potential is, is everywhere and it's really just a matter of establishing the vision. Once the vision is there, then things start flowing from there. Okay, so you are a data scientist yourself, but so from a personal perspective, because you're not going to lose your data science in your everyday life as well, you probably look at things differently. So if there was one problem in the world that exists for humanity <laughs> that you could solve with data, yeah. what, would, what, would you, what would you solve with data? So I'm going to correct you just a little bit. Okay. Um, so I actually am a facilitator of the amazing data scientists that we have at Pivotal. So I'm the global head of data science. I'm the person that makes data science successful. Um, I hire the best in class data scientists for our organization. I actually go out of my way to make it clear that I don't call myself a data scientist. I okay. happen to have the honor of leading the a really great group team. of data scientists. Okay. Um, now that said, I also have the honor of seeing all of the project work that we're doing and um, I have the ability to really converse with customers as they're conceptualizing new, new, um, new use cases. Um, we actually just announced a program which is called Pivotal for Good. Um, so in essence, what we're going to be doing is donating three months of data science time after three years of tenure with my team to any nonprofit of um, the data scientist's choice. Um, and I explicitly did that because there are so many amazing potential data science projects in the nonprofit world. You know, we were just talking, for example, with Humanity United, um, and they were wanting to leverage a data set that's been curated um, elsewhere, but use that data set to predict mass atrocities um, happening anywhere in the world, right? And this data set happens to be um, updated daily, just based on the news events of and um, macroeconomics and weather and yeah. demographics, et cetera, right? So those are the kinds of you know, uh, human uh, impact applications of data science that I am personally very passionate about. And what I want to do is bring the data science guns to Helping. the organizations that really are trying to do amazing things in behalf of all of us, um, but just 
have a hard time competing in the way that we can for luring talent and training them and really making them um, more able to execute quickly, right? So I think that's what we're really focused on is finding those opportunities amidst all of the other project work that we're doing in financial services and healthcare and bioinformatics, you know, and security and IT, et cetera, et cetera. All, you know, we're active in all of those areas, but I want to create a pipeline to support the nonprofit sector too. Excellent, that's one of the more altruistic answers I've heard. That's great. Yeah. Um, we look forward to seeing you guys yeah. at Pivotal, at Future Strata Hindu Dupes. Yeah. And thank you we, for your time today. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah.